Cardinals down 17 to nothing at halftime. It's the High V halftime report brought to you by High V of Liberty on a gorgeous day in Kirksville, Missouri. Truman State though leads at 17 to nothing on a Devonte Black to Kurt Lloyd pass of five yards with 8:04 left in the first quarter. A field goal from Roger Howard, 29 yards out with 10:32 in the second quarter left, and then with 12 seconds left in the half, a 24-yard pass from backup quarterback Zach Tobin to Derek Hammond, and it's 17 to nothing at half. We are joined by the Director of Athletics at William Jewell College. Darlene Bailey is with us here on this gorgeous day here uh, at Truman State. We talked about Truman State and Jewell were so equal in so many ways, uh, especially when it comes to academics and how we view athletics. This ball game is an interesting one just due to the lack of execution. We have not executed when we needed to. Truman State has. That's exactly right. It looks to me like that we're they're not that much better than we are, if any better. And uh, we're just not executing like we want to. Our defense is, is doing a pretty good job, I think. And second half, I hope it's a better story. Which, to me, I, I, I kind of like it because that means we have a chance. We're not being dominated here. We just right. need to get some things straightened out. And Coach Crow and I think you'd agree. Yeah, I think the only game that we've been dominated at all, all year, Darlene, is uh, over in needing a chance to go is when we played over at uh, Colorado School of Mines. The rest of the time, we're in every ball game. And, you know, well, I'll, and I'll point out, even in the first half there, we were very much in that game. And I hope none of the Cardinal fans think I'm negative Ned by any stretch of the imagination. We are close, but you have to, like you guys both have already said, you have to ex uh, execute the plays that are given. And, you know, I think a lot of that still comes down to confidence. And we're getting closer every game and every quarter and every year. But it's still that confidence saying that you're, you're trying to build. But back to the positives, you know, uh, I know quite a few people up here, and I know the football coach Nesmith real well, and we've got to know the sport. You know, we are very similar, don't you think? And let's talk about the academics. We forget that both of these schools, you would hire anybody from either one of these schools, and that's really what you – but in comparison, I think, you know, talking with those, those people, I don't know if you feel the same way. One reason why Truman State came into the conference is because the academics – that's in our conference. You might want to talk about that a little bit. That's right. We are very similar to Truman. And when um, it was determined that they would come into the GLVC, we thought it would be a great fit for us. And I think it has been. We want to get on the winning side a little more often. But, uh, you know, we do go after the same student athletes. We look at the academic profile, the students that, that we know can do well at Jewel or, or also at Truman. And, and on the recruiting weekends, and I saw a bunch of recruits down on the field a while ago, I bet some of those same kids are going to be at our place in a couple of weeks. So definitely go against them. In terms of the academic quality, uh, very, very similar. Let me ask you this. I was talking to the sports information fellow, and Rick, you were busy trying to do the technical stuff here. I didn't realize this, but they feel the same way that you just uh, talked about. And they said a real recruiting area, the three main recruiting areas for Truman State is Chicago, St. Louis, and Kansas City. Uh, do you think that are you do you really recruit that much in Chicago? You do guys a little bit more in Texas and the southern part, don't we you? We would probably trade Chicago for Dallas area, yeah. but definitely St. Louis. Uh, you can see a lot of St. Louis kids on the field today for us, and Kansas City is a definite. And I know Truman's in Kansas City a lot, and you know we are. We're going up against exactly the same things, but of course you know what we're selling. We're selling smaller, more individualized attention, and all those kinds of things. And students end up deciding which type of campus they want to go to, and in particular academic programs. Programs, and certainly we also sell our location in terms of Kansas City. Well, that's what I was getting ready to say. You know, it's been a fun run no matter who you are if you're a Kansas City Royals fan. So it's great to live in the city like that. And you get, no, really, there's a lot more opportunities. Not knocking Kirksville, but I went to Northwest and came up here many times to play ball, baseball and stuff. Now, not a whole lot going on. Whereas back home, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things. So that should be a tool for you guys, right? Absolutely. Our proximity to Kansas City and the opportunities for internships and practical experience and, and the professional folks we can draw on to come to our campus to speak at classes and that kind of thing is, is a definite plus. And, you know, when it comes right down to it, two kids want to know what can they do to have fun. Right. And we certainly point all those things out on a recruiting visit. Cardinals here trail 17 and nothing in half, and our guest is Athletic Director Darlene Bailey. Let's talk a little bit about some of the sports that have gone on this weekend. Kind of an interesting soccer season for us because we've been so many, so many close matches have not gone our way, including last night a, a tie sent the women's game into overtime with just a few seconds left as uh, Southern Indiana tied it up and then won it in the 106th minute. The men dropped their match two to nothing, but soccer on the road this weekend. Yes, you know it's been a it's been an interesting season for soccer. We've had a lot of injuries, uh, particularly on the women's side, and uh, for how um, 
how we're doing on the women's side, we're really pretty pleased. Now, mm -hmm. you never want to think about a tie being a good thing, but when I saw that last night, I'm like, okay, a tie on the road to a pretty good team, but then we did let it get away there at the end, and that's simply experienced. I am Two or three of our, our, arguably our best players are injured on the women's side, and we're still doing pretty well in the league. Plus, it, as you said, a very young team to begin with. And then on the men's side, we are definitely very young and finding our way, and I know we're playing an awful lot of young kids on the on the men's side. So really, for both of them, the future looks bright. And for the women, the future could even be this year uh, because they're, they're doing pretty well and have a chance to vie for the postseason. Right. They are right in the middle. Last time I checked, in the middle of the eight teams that would go to the postseason. Who's the smallest school in the conference in Roman Wise? Because talking with the Bulldog people up here, I they said they're around 6,000 visiting with them. Are we the smallest in the conference as student enrollment wise, you think? Actually, St. Joseph's is a little smaller are than they? we are. Yeah, they so, would be the smallest. So give, give me the range. I mean, educate your, your people listening. There. I think this is kind of sound. And from the top, who is Truman 6,000 the most in Indianapolis, probably? Uh, Truman is not the most and when we're talking football it would be when we're talking all glbc schools i believe southern indiana has the the biggest population they're a state institution yeah, right and so they're over ten thousand. i okay. think there may be about twelve thousand. in terms of the football schools truman uh, missouri s t are going to be the the largest in terms of the state schools looking at um, right around six thousand six and then yeah a little bit more mm -hmm. and then uh, indianapolis is about three thousand Obviously, we're about 1,100. Um, St. Joseph's is under 1,000. McKendry is about 1,400. Don't quote me on that, but no, I think I, that's exactly. Just give me a ball. It's, it's in that ballpark. Because I wasn't sure myself. Yeah, so McKendry's I'm a little bit bigger than we are. You know, and also sometimes those numbers um, get quoted a little differently. I'm trying to quote full-time undergraduate right. enrollment. Some of those institutions have graduate programs that bumps their head count up, but I think those numbers are pretty close in terms of undergraduate enrollment. So you do have a huge variety uh, as far as the student enrollments of schools you're competing against as far as student populations are concerned. Absolutely. Before the game, I, I was talking to, um, to actually Nick West's dad and uh, I was looking down the field, and I was looking at the band, and I was looking at the cheerleaders, I was looking at the group that was right. singing the national anthem, right. and um, I thought to myself, well, that's Jules' entire student body on the <laughs> on the field <laughs> with the number of students that they right. had uh, involved in the pregame activities. And so, yeah, it, it's a big difference. You know, we want to try to, to provide the same um, experience for the student athletes and their playing experience, but there are some things that are a little bit different. And, um, you know, we're very excited about uh, our new um, instrumental music director, Landon Hemingway, who's with us, that is actually going to get a band started. I heard that. will come back for football. I'd be pumped about that. And I am very, very excited about that. Um, I think we, we might get started with a little percussion group, a drum line, we'll which I can anything. see that Truman has that, uh, probably as a microcosm of their larger band. But that's a very exciting thing for us, certainly from the game atmosphere standpoint, but also for the opportunity to recruit more students to our already very good music program at William Jewell. Yeah, I think it could do nothing but help. You know, I think about all the large schools there in the Kansas City. Here and they have great bands. I mean, we have really strong band program in Kansas City for the high schools and public schools. And I think you could recruit people to come in there and that help your student enrollment. But I don't think a lot of the average people really realize the difference there. And there's a huge difference. You can offer a lot of different things with more people. Absolutely. Dr. Darlene Bailey with us here at halftime. The Cardinals are down 17 to nothing to Truman State. Uh, we talked a little bit about soccer. Let's talk about volleyball at home yesterday swept by, uh, by Maryville. And today they're actually playing, I believe, right now against the University of Missouri St. Louis. Yeah, I think we started at 3 o'clock today against uh, UMSL. Yeah, I was at the match last night with uh, Maryville, and um, it was disappointing. I, you know, we we really um, were very young. We have a first-year coach. We've had some transition in our volleyball program the last year, and, you know, the seniors on our team, seniors and juniors on our team have played for three different coaches, and, right. and you never um, want that to be a situation, but sometimes it just happens. And I'm very excited about our coach, Carolyn Rains. She has a great background, great pedigree, played at Washburn, and I think she's going to do a really good job, but it takes a little while to get the pieces together. You know, if you're just looking at her, the record for this year, you'd say, oh, very disappointing. However, I want to point this out. If people haven't seen us play or maybe if they have she has tried so many different combinations every single person on that roster has had their chance to contribute or showed that they should be a full rotation player I love that I love that she isn't just picking out six or seven and sticking with that she has tried about everything I think she could possibly try well, and I think that makes sense with the first-year coach. You know that you're not going to win the league title probably unless uh, a miracle happens. Uh, and so you, you look at building for the future and the program overall while trying to provide the very, the very best 
experience you can for the right. student athletes. And you're right. She's trying a lot of things. These are many students that she did not recruit. So she's learning what they can do. The other thing I think is really important that I pointed out to someone last night I was talking to at the match was that um, she is not uh, familiar with the GLBC. And, you know, the type of player that's going to be competitive in the GLBC might be a little bit different than the conference that she was in Texas, even different from the MIAA. So to see the type of um, player, the type of body type that's really important in volleyball, yeah. to see what she needs to go after to build her team for the future and how she can maximize the talent she has is really important. Boy, she's a competitor, too. You see her. She's involved in every point of every match right to the very end, and yet, you know, it's tough to, to lose. And yet last night she was just in it entirely from beginning to end, I, and I love that. So, uh, but Do you have any results on cross country? I know they had to reschedule and I go to Haskell yeah, the, today. Um, the, um, Field conditions or the, the course conditions down at SBU, I guess, were um, not appropriate for having a, a meet today. And so they canceled that one down at Southwest Baptist. And so they went over to Haskell and Lawrence. And I have not um, looked yeah, at my we phone were hoping to see where to, we can get We're hoping that. to have some here by the end of our football broadcast. I wanted to point out something I thought was very neat happened on campus this week with the resurfacing of our tennis courts, which are right to the uh, south side of the Maybe Center. Our tennis team was able to host Missouri Western this week in their fall scrimmage uh, or fall matches. Can you talk a little bit about that and, yeah, and what fun. the reality of that is? Uh, you know, our tennis courts have needed some work. And uh, also the size of our tennis courts makes it really impractical, not impossible, but impractical to have a dual meet for both men and women at the same time. It would just take too long to play the match. No lights, uh, trying to keep students in class. So we typically play our dual matches out at Clayview Country Club. But uh, only playing a women's match um, this um, Tuesday afternoon, I believe it was, against Missouri Western, it made a lot of sense to bring it back on campus. We're able to do that with just one team. And, and it was interesting to see. We certainly put it out on the campus email. So some of the faculty knew that uh, we were playing and to see some of them wander down the hill, yeah. some of the students to come down. and There was a lot of people on. there. there I, I went over with Rick, and uh, we watched it. It was a pretty good turnout, a beautiful day. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty good college life when you do stuff like that's that. Right. Those are the little things that really help, I think. And those things are good for recruiting as well. I mean, you know, Missouri Western is another state school in our proximity, and we've gone head-to-head -head against them for some players. And um, so – it was good to have that on campus. 17 to nothing. Truman State leads at halftime as we visit with Darlene Bailey. Uh, swimming, they had their first action at the Missouri Show Me Showdown last weekend. They're hosting their Red Black Weekend this weekend, their inner squad kind of an event. And so swimming season is here. It's kind of one of those transition sports between winter and, and fall. Yeah, you don't like to say you forget about swimming starting already, but uh, it is one that starts a little bit off compared to everyone else. And uh, I know I saw a lot of swimmers last night at the volleyball match because they are around training some this weekend and then we'll have that red and black I think coming up next week the Missouri Intercollegiate's a really fun uh, meet for them to go to because every single program in the state of Missouri from the University of Missouri all the way down to NAI schools that have swimming they all go to that kind of an all comers meet it's a beautiful facility down at Mizzou and um, it's kind of an individual yeah, type kids thing. Like swimming the there. kids love to go it's, it's a, a great nice facility. place it's a and, nice uh, place. so so they did that last week and had that experience and kind of you know it swimming's by time so they right. see where they stack up against the best of the best and they've got that now to shoot for for the rest of the year and my final thing I wanted to talk to you about and there are so many things I want to ask you about this is basketball season not very far away at the end of the month jewel at the University of Missouri in men's basketball I don't know if we've ever played Missouri at least in the modern era but that's a big deal even though we're playing at the Hearn Center big deal for us to take on the Tigers that'll be a good thing you know and that's um there's a lot of um things that have happened as a result of moving to Division Two, but certainly having the opportunity to play up to a Division One school in men's basketball is, is good, and women's basketball as well. You know, the, in, when we were NAIA, those, those um, competitions were not, they're kind of a no-no for the Division One institutions. But for Division One institutions to play Division Two institutions in the exhibition is perfectly fine. And so that's where your relationships uh, pay off, uh, coaches that have relationships with other coaches. And to have um, at least one of those Division One teams on our schedule is good for recruiting, sure. it's good for exposure, and, and it's also good to, again, to measure where your team is at. And when we got into the GLBC, I know, noticed and, and talked to Coach Holly about some of the teams playing two or three of those kind of opponents. I said, you know, let's let's start out with one and see where we go. We played down at Missouri State uh, a couple years ago, and that was a good good thing for us. And then certainly this uh, game is a result of Larry's longtime association with Coach Kim Anderson. Right, that's what I was going to ask you about. That's, that's how that came about. I was going to say, uh, 
Coach Holly came through there. I know him and Kim are tight. Of course, Coach uh, Holly knows everybody from here, the East Coast to the West Coast. <laughs> so you could probably play anybody in the nation if you would. They'll come well, and Coach play Holly too. has an amazing memory. Not only does he know everybody from the East to the Coast to the West Coast, he remembers everything about them. <laughs> right. They do. He can. He yeah, can. Yeah, um, that's for sure. Call about anybody's resume, which is yeah, pretty amazing. That's yeah, exactly it really right. Is you know, if you're ever going to drive in a blizzard, you want to drive with Coach Holly because if you get stuck, you he'll have somebody to stay with. Yeah, and he's got stories too. Yeah, yeah he can keep right. you awake. That's for sure. Darlene, anything else we, we haven't talked about here that's uh, on your mind that we, we should cover? Well, you know, it's, it's just an exciting time. You know, we're getting ready to start basketball. We've got a, we're going to have a lot of new players for men's and women's basketball this year as a result of graduations and things. And so I would encourage folks to come out and see our basketball teams because they're going to have a different look. We've got some uh, different players in our program. So that's going to be an awful lot of fun. Otherwise, you know, we're about halfway through the semester. It's fall break, so campus got a little quiet this week. And um, you see the students buckling down and studying and uh, doing the things that they need to do. And, um it's just a lot of fun. We, we're at a great place. We've had a beautiful summer and fall, and our campus is beautiful. It's, it's beautiful up here today. We couldn't ask for a better day for football. Yep. So. And I'm, I'm looking for us to play and execute a little bit better in the second half. And I'm actually probably going to stay in Kirksville a little bit longer today because oh, I think dinner might be so I can catch the end of the Royals That's game. That's exactly, exactly what we're, what we're talking about. <laughs> Darlene Bailey, Director of Athletics, thank you for being with us.